ディズニーシンデレラディズニーシンデレラ Once upon a time in a far away place there lived a beautiful girl called Cinderella. She lived in an old house with her stepmother and two stepsisters. They were horrid to her because she was beautiful and they were not. Cinderella's only friends were the mice who lived in the house and Bruno the dog. Cinderella walked hard in the house. She wore old clothes and did all the cleaning, polishing, cooking, and mending. Her stepsisters, who were very ugly, dressed in fine clothes and went out to parties. One day, an invitation came from the palace. The king and the queen were giving a ball for their son, the prince. All the young ladies in the land were invited to attend. The prince will choose his bride at the ball, shrieked the ugly sisters. How exciting, said Cinderella. Her eyes sparkling. But her cruel stepmother and stepsisters laughed at her. How can you go to the ball? You have nothing to wear, and anyway, you will have to help us to get ready, they said. The day of the ball arrived, and the ugly sisters found. Lots of jobs for Cinderella to do. Cinderella, wash my stockings and curl my hair, shouted one loudly. Cinderella, find my fan and fetch my dancing slippers, called the other. And all the time, Cinderella's stepmother scolded her. For being so slow. At last, the ugly sisters were dressed in their finest clothes, ready for the ball. Their coach arrived and they climbed in, chattering and singing happily. They waved their mother and called, Goodbye, Cinderella, and off they went. Cinderella went out into the garden and cried and cried. If only I could go to the ball, she sobbed. Suddenly, she was a strange yellow, yellow light in the sky. Cinderella rubbed her eyes to see if she was dreaming. But when she looked again, she saw a lady standing in front of her. Holding a wand. Don't cry, Cinderella, said the lady kindly. I am your fairy godmother. You are going to the ball, but first you must fetch me a large pumpkin. Cinderella found the biggest and the fattest pumpkin in the garden, and Bruno and the mice helped her to. Bring it to the fairy godmother. With a wave of her wand and a flash of light, the fairy godmother turned the pumpkin into a beautiful coach. Cinderella could not believe her eyes. Waving her wand again, the fairy godmother turned the mice into fine horses. And a driver for the sparkling coach, and Bruno the dog became a very handsome footman. There, said the fairy godmother, 
Now you are ready. But then she saw that Cinderella was still wearing her old little dress. Oh dear me, said the fairy godmother. That will never do. She waved her magic wand once more. Suddenly Cinderella's old little clothes disappeared, and she was dressed in the most beautiful ball gown that she had ever seen. She had dainty glass slippers on her feet and long stain long satin gloves on her hands. Oh, she said, how can I ever thank you? Just have a wonderful time, said her fairy godmother. But remember, the magic stops at the midnight. Cinderella promised that she would be home by midnight. Then she stepped into the magic coach and waved goodbye to her fairy godmother. She was going to the ball. The palace looked splendid. Every room was filled with music and lights. The court ladies were dressed in their very best clothes and finery, but Cinderella was by far the most beautiful there. Everyone wondered who she could be. Even her own stepsisters did not recognize her. The prince looked at no one else and danced with Cinderella all the night. Time passed so quickly that she forgot about the promise to her fairy godmother. And then Cinderella heard the clock as it began to strike midnight. One, two, three. Without a word, Cinderella ran from the ballroom. Four, five, and down the palace steps. Six, seven. She ran so fast that she lost one of her glass slippers on the steps. But she had no time to pick it up. Eight, nine. The magic coach was waiting for her at the bottom of the steps. She jumped in quickly and the coach sped away into the night, leaving the palace far behind. Ten, eleven. As the clock struck twelve, the magic coach, driver, footman, and the horses all disappeared. The magic had stopped. Next morning, the kingdom was filled with the news of the ball, and the princess searched for the owner of a glass slipper. The Grand Duke was visiting every house in the land with the glass slipper in his hand. Don't come back until you have found the girl who was wearing this slipper. I will marry only her, the prince had said. Every girl tried on the slipper, but it would not fit any of them. Cinderella's ugly stepsisters tried the hardest of all. They pushed and pulled and tugged and twisted, but still the slipper would not fit. Just as the Grand Duke was about to leave the house, Cinderella came into the room. Oh, he said, turning to her step stepmother, but I thought you said that there were no other girls in this house. She's only a servant, said the stepmother. She did not go to the ball. And with that, she knocked the glass slipper out of the duke's hand. It fell to the floor with a crash and broke into a hundred pieces. 
Now I will never find the prince's bride, the duke cried. Cinderella stepped forward. Yes, you will, she said softly. I have the other slipper. And she pulled it out of her pocket. It slipped easily onto her foot. The duke was delighted. His search was over. The ugly sisters and the cruel stepmother were furious that Cinderella should have the other glass slipper. They could not think how it could have happened. So Cinderella married the prince. The mice and the blue nose dog went to live with them in the palace, and they all lived happily ever after. <laughs>